when you get diagnosed about glaucoma or your parents get diagnosed about glaucoma it can be a stressful situation because glaucoma is known to be one of the leading cause of blindness if not detected in time so i'm doing this uh, glaucoma educational series to help you understand more about glaucoma and let me start by reassuring you that glaucoma is not always a blinding disease you know it's blinding if not detected in time but if we detect it in time and that's one of the major prevention of glaucoma that is early detection uh, then you can enjoy a lifelong healthy vision i have patients follow ups for you know more than two decades now uh, who are doing very well despite having glaucoma so let's start on that optimistic note and let me make you understand the types of glaucoma the stages of glaucoma because it's not just one entity uh, glaucoma and as in india in hindi we recognize it is that kala motia uh, is one of those silent diseases where people don't come to know about it it has no symptoms except few types of glaucoma so first and foremost anybody who is above 40 years of age has to start getting a routine yearly eye checkup in which we always take eye pressures and that's how we detect early glaucomas now there are certain people with risk factors who should themselves get uh, get themselves checked for example if you have family history of glaucoma and if you're above 40 start getting your eyes screened once a year and that's a quick routine checkup in which you will be detected for any early glaucoma if you've taken steroids for any reason for any other disease if you've taken long term steroids oral steroids or intramuscular steroids or if you've been putting steroid eye drops for some other eye disease for very long then you're at a risk and yearly get your you know eye examined for eye pressure if you have systemic diseases like diabetes hypertension thyroid this could also put you at risk because the incidence of glaucoma is a little higher in these population also some eye diseases like if you have high myopia if you've been operated for retinal detachments and conditions if you have recurrent infections of the eye like uh, or inflammations like iritis uveitis they can also have secondary glaucomas you know so bottom line is to detect it early now you, most people talk about eye pressures in glaucoma eye pressure is just one of the entity in glaucoma there are other factors also when we look into it to give you a uh, insight as to what happens now suppose you are glaucoma suspect you visited a clinic and somebody said you may have glaucoma either looking at your eye pressures or looking at your optic nerve what is the next step okay so i'll just take you through the series of events which happen post this first diagnosis is that we take your eye pressures one is the puff uh, tonometry which is a screening you have a air puff coming into your eye which is done by the optometrist they screen your eye for normal eye pressures 10 to 21 but that's just a range again there'll be some people who will have normal eye pressure but can still have normal tension glaucoma and there'll be some people who have high pressure but not necessarily have glaucoma they are in the category of ocular hypertension so i'm giving you an idea so that you understand that there is a wide range when we talk about eye pressures also so when you come in the optometrist for anybody above 40 does that puff air puff thing which takes your eye pressure if you're within 10 to 21 you're relatively safe and if the doctor suspects anything then he will also do something called as applination tonometry we will actually you know the instrument touches your cornea and takes the eye pressure we take the central corneal thickness the cct the corneal thickness of the eye because the eye pressure is taken through the cornea some people are born with thick cornea some have thin corneas and this corneal thickness affects the eye pressure it can either underestimate or overestimate it so it's important to do your cct also next step is to look at the angles of the eye now anatomically between the cornea and iris there is an angle from where the fluid of the eye is formed and it's drained from that angle to create a perfect balance of eye pressure in the eye some people naturally have narrow or closed angle so that comes into the category of closed angle and that is seen by the doctor with a lens called gonioscopy after we have seen your eye pressures and angles of the eye we check on your optic nerve the entry of the optic nerve is seen as a disc on the retina and there is a cup size the cup disc ratio which defines at what stage whether you have glaucoma at what stage do you have there can be a lot of masquerading things there are other eye diseases or optic nerve diseases which look like glaucoma also there could be some people who just have physiologically big cups so you may you know go to some clinician and he says oh you have big cup let me run a series of tests through you and that decides whether you just born with big cups especially myops have physiologically large cups or is it because of glaucoma that your retinal nerve fibers are thinned out and hence the cup of your optic nerve has become big so we see that 
then after that is the more detailed investigation to decide what type of glaucoma you have what stage of glaucoma so in glaucoma the eye pressure chronically damage your nerve fiber layer thickness and when the nerves become thin you can actually measure the thickness or thinness of your retinal nerve fibers uh, by something called as oct so oct disc oct retinal nerve fiber layer is done to assess how thick or thin your retina fibers have become and functionally what those thickness or thinness of the nerve fiber does is damage your peripheral field vision and that's why people don't get to know because the central vision in glaucoma is retained for a very long time so perimetry is a computerized test where the technician shows you different light stimuli bright and darker and you respond to them and the computerized machine does an algorithm work up and gives you an analysis of your functional capacity of your retinal nerve fibers and sometimes we pick up these early visual field defect and we decide that you know whether you need treatment or just follow up when all this is done we have to look at everything in total just one eye pressure reading doesn't mean you have glaucoma one high eye pressure or just a big cup of the disc doesn't mean you have glaucoma or a visual field defect because anything which is happening behind the eyes your optic nerve or on your brain level sometimes you may not do the test very well because it's a subjective test so we ask you to repeat so after doing all this comprehensive looking at all the diagnostic test after taking your history uh, you know your systemic condition we look at everything in total and decide whether you are a glaucoma suspect or you have glaucoma or you have what stage whether it's early advanced and then decide your treatment accordingly now there is something called as target iop which means that when we talk about 10 to 20 eye pressure it's a wide range whom to keep on 10 and whom to keep on 20 is decided by all the tests and the family history that we have taken or your uh, personal systemic history so i will decide for you whether 10 to 12 pressure is okay for you or 19 20 pressure is okay for you depending on the complete profile now how do we titrate how do we control these eye pressures either it could be in the form of drops so there are these four five group of glaucoma drops where again depending on your profile we decide which drop would be best for you so glaucoma eye drops to decrease the eye pressure sometimes we need to do a laser so there is in opal angle glaucomas we do something called as slt selective laser trabeculoplasty where little laser micro pulses open up the mesh work the trabecular mesh work at the angles of the eye when they open up the aqueous just flows out and the pressures come down so either we do that in narrow angle it's a very different thing in narrow angle because the fluid doesn't have space to go out we create a small hole laser hole this is the machine of the laser it's a walk in walk out procedure called nd yag uh, peripheral iridotomy when we do that laser it the aqueous flows and the angles open up so the acute attack of glaucoma doesn't happen by itself the laser pi does not decrease the eye pressure but it elevates the risk of attack of angle closure glaucomas so either we do only drops or we do drops plus laser in advanced glaucoma suppose your eye pressures are not getting controlled by eye drops then we have to go for filtering surgeries something like trabeculectomy with mitomycin um, you know it's it's a little filtering track which we create on your eye from the angles of the eye the fluid goes into the you know spaces conjunctiva and tenons or the covering of the eye and that's how the pressure keeps low in patients where one trabeculectomy doesn't work Uh, because sometimes there can be under or over filtration depending on the natural tissue of the eye how it gets fibrosed whether the filtering tract remains patent or not we may have to revise the bleb the filtering bleb or we may need to do a second procedure uh, in advanced glaucomas which are not controlled by filtering pressure also we do tubes and shunt something like a agv ahmed glaucoma valve where there is a tube into your anterior chamber which helps the fluid to egress out slowly and keep your pressure under control now there is a very uh, difficult and something called as refractive glaucoma which does not refractory glaucoma which does not respond to either medicine or filtering surgery uh, or the valves and there we do something called as transscleral diode laser where the laser shots are given on the white portion of your eyeball there's a uh, area called ciliary body which produces the fluid of the eye so the laser ablates that and decreases the fluid production so that the pressure comes down and usually we reserve this procedure as a end stage uh, um, you know choice where nothing else works and we do it selective so that it's safe so if you've uh, you know understood a little bit about the different 
diagnosis, stage of glaucoma, the different options, you will understand the seriousness of the situation in terms of your being diligent with the treatment and most important is follow up. So whenever your doctor tells you to follow up because you don't feel anything. So you may miss your eye drops, you know, you may not be so reg regular with you. You say, oh, I'm feeling fine. What's the need to go to the doctor? But it doesn't work like that because the field changes will keep happening. Your optic nerve will slowly keep getting damaged. And, you know, you don't want to be at a situation where you regret that. Why did I not take the treatment at the right time? Or why was I not, uh, you know, uh, regular with my um, eye drops? One small tip for people who are on glaucoma eye drops, always do something called as punctal occlusion. When you put the glaucoma drops, this space between the nose and eye, just after putting the drops, you, uh, one drop always, you press this area for 60 seconds. What this does is it allows the drop to be longer in the eye, it's efficacious and it decreases the systemic absorption of any eye drop so that there is no systemic side effect. So I will conclude this video here because this was to give you an overview of diagnosis and the treatment options. With the advancement in science and technology, please be assured that your vision can very well be taken care of. Do not get disheartened thinking that, oh, it's a blinding disease. Am I going blind? No. Also be cautious of the fact that whether you have been overdiagnosed as glaucoma, because as I have told you that just one eye pressure reading or just one, you know, large cup on the disc doesn't mean you have glaucoma. You have to look at everything in total. You need to have a deep insight into, you know, what you're treating. And in the second part of the video, I'm going to break it into two. I'm going to tell you how to live with glaucoma, how to enjoy a healthy lifestyle, how to ha retain a good vision, simple practical tips, you know, on how to live with glaucoma. So if you want to watch that, I'll put another uh, video following this and uh, hope that helps and uh, enjoy a happy, healthy uh, vision and happy, happy, healthy life to you.